Hello and welcome to DBMS, which stands for Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you the curriculum of DBMS. So let's begin. What you see on your screen right here are all the 10 units that are going to be covered in Database Management Systems. And I'm going to take you on a tour of all the 10 units one by one. So let's get started. The first unit you'll study in DBMS is called Database System Architecture. So let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Database System Architecture gives you the big picture of DBMS. Here you'll study data independence and data abstraction, which provide you ways to hide data from certain users and make it available to certain users. So you'll also study different types of database users and a diagram of the database system architecture. The next unit you're going to study in DBMS is called data models. Let's dig deeper into data models. Data models are the face of DBMS. They represent in pictorial format what a database looks like. In this unit, you'll study the relational model, the entity relationship model, the network model, and the object-oriented model. Next, we are going to study relational query languages. Let's see what it's all about. Relational query languages allow us to ask questions to the database. This comes in handy when you want to learn more about the data or you want to find some specific data from the database. Here, you will study topics like relational algebra, tuple relational calculus, domain relational calculus, and some open source and commercial DBMS softwares. Next, we are going to go to tool the relational database design. So let's see what it's all about. Relational database design allows us to design the database efficiently. This means designing a database that is normalized, free from functional dependencies, and decomposed without loss of data. So next on our journey, let's visit query processing and optimization. Let's see what it's all about. Query processing and optimization tells us what goes on behind the scenes in DBMS. When you ask a question to the database, it gets parsed and translated into a relational algebra expression, which is then optimized using statistical data and converted into an execution plan. This execution plan is then evaluated and implemented by the evaluation engine, which fetches data from the database and produces the required output. So the next time you go to Amazon to search for a cool new gadget, you'll realize what's going on behind the scenes in the Amazon database. Fascinating, isn't it? DBMS uses some truly amazing data structures, which we are going to see now in the unit called Storage Strategy. So let's go ahead and look at it. Storage strategies tell us what kinds of data structures are used within DBMS to make it fast and accessible. We use data structures like indices, B trees and B plus trees, and hash tables. These data structures make DBMS a lot faster and makes data retrieval very quick. Indices allow us 
to access database just the way you would access a textbook using the index when you move, when you want to move to a specific topic. B trees, B plus trees, and hash tables are variants of index which allow you to access data much faster than a normal index would. That's what storage strategies are all about. And next on our journey are transaction processing. Let's take a closer look at transaction processing. DBMS often is used in, the, in banking systems, but its use is not limited to banking systems. However, understanding DBMS using banking terminologies allows us to understand it better. So now we're going to see some of the uh, benefits of using DBMS. The first such benefit is the ability to handle failures. Failures occur in any system, anytime, and they could be internal failures or external hardware failures. And every system has to be prepared to handle such failures. And so is DBMS. DBMS is always prepared to handle such failures. And that's why in this section, you will be learning how to handle failures by using backups and recovery measures. Now, in the next section, you are going to study durability. Durability is another very important property of DBMS, which makes the data inside the DBMS persistent, which means the data is there for you all the time, as long as you need it. Now we are going to see the next section in, in this particular unit transaction processing. And the next section is concurrency. Concurrency is when multiple people try to access the same type of data at the same time. This is where lots of problems can happen. And this is where scheduling comes into picture. This is where you need to make a sort of a timetable of who is allowed to access what and when. So this is where you'll study how to make such, a, such an effective timetable that such issues related to concurrency can be avoided. And next part of the unit is called deadlocks. So deadlocks occur in a database system just like they occur on a crossroad where no vehicle is able to move, just as you can see on the screen right here. And deadlocks are a big problem in DBMS. And you will study in this unit how you can manage such deadlocks, how you can resolve such deadlocks. So that's what transaction processing is all about. And next on our journey is a unit called security. This is the unit where you will learn how to make a database secure because there are so many users and different types of users in a database management system and it is necessary that each user gets to use only what is allowed to that user to use. So every user must be authorized in order to access certain data. And so within a DBMS you need to provide this mechanism where users are allowed to access only the data that they are authorized to access. And this is where you study security and all the concepts of security within DBMS. And then that brings us to the next unit, which is called SQL. So let's see what's there in SQL. SQL is an exciting programming language that you will be studying in DBMS. SQL stands for structured query language and it is a declarative programming language so if you're studying languages like c language and java and python all those languages you must know are procedural languages because they ask you for a procedure but sql on the other hand is a declarative language which does not ask for a procedure you simply have to specify what you want you don't have to specify how to get it and this makes SQL very easy to use and very easy to learn. So you are going to study this exciting new language in DBMS. 
and now this brings us to the end of our journey where we are going to visit PLSQL. Let's take a closer look at it. PLSQL stands for Procedural Language SQL and like I said before, SQL is a declarative language where you simply need to specify what you want and not how to get it for you. But sometimes you might require those procedural con concepts like loops which you use in C language or Java or Python and, and these procedural concepts allow you to make SQL even better. So PLSQL is like an extension of SQL and you're going to study this too within DBMS. So now this, this is where we end our journey of all the 10 units of DBMS. And I hope that the journey made you as excited to learn DBMS as I am excited to teach you. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.